hello welcome 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 so today we'll be discussing on self-help tips for quitting addiction i'm hoping that a lot of people will quit come first of me so let this be um the motivation you have been waiting for to quit the first thing is of course after you have decided that you want to quit which i'm hoping a lot of persons will do after watching this video in fact during while watching this video after that decision is to pick a date if your quitting date is first of next month which i said is wonderful stick to it pick a date that is very close don't pick a date of sometimes in december by then a lot of things would have happened i would have thrown, thrown that decision out of your mind so pick a date that you want to quit quitting is different from reducing usage so let it be that you want to quit not that you you want to reduce the four wraps of weed to one wrap that doesn't get anybody into sustained recovery so then after deciding to quit is to begin to destroy every paraphernalia of drugs and any of those behavior the wrap of loud you have at home flush it out down the toilet the wrap of weed flush it down the toilet the one for colorado flush it down the toilet if it's um, for those who do porn and uh, masturbation addiction, burn up the sex toys. The wrapping paper for the smokes, burn it up. The shisha you have, break it. Why am I saying destroy all these things? If you don't have them around, your chances of relapse is very, very low. It's very slim. Then it's also enough motivation. It just is like fire that gingers you more that, ah, if I can do this one, yes. I am ready to quit and please don't dash it out because some other rationale that people will give is I know how much I bought this thing let me dash it out or give it to someone else will you dash sniper out that somebody should go and die with it it's the same thing if you won't dash sniper out regardless of how much you bought it also don't dash this one out so please destroy it like now I'm ready for a fresh start let me burn up every of the negative parts that I have so I can forge ahead with strength and confidence into the new future so that's the next thing then after burning up the paraphernalia is get an accountability partner the one that will be able to check up on you how far how are you doing how are you coping are you sticking to your resolve are you sticking to your decisions it could be a friend it could be a sibling it could be a parent it could be a spouse it could be your clergy maybe your pastor your priest as the case may be because addiction thrives in isolation and in secrecy accountability disempowers the isolation and the secrecy so you have a sober person that you can lean on depending when you're able to stand solidly on your feet then in lieu to getting an accountability partner is also to tell all your smoke bodies that guys oh, I am done smoking I'm not doing this again and your drinking bodies don't buy drinks for me again when we go out you buy me water or don't call me when you guys are going to smoke don't smoke near me don't drink near me so that at least my chances of being tempted is reduced then of course you will now begin a routine have a routine around your life addiction is tantamount to chaos and unpredictability the only thing that is constant in the life of an addict is the usage the plan to, the, to, the plan to use, the high from using, the guilt after the eye, and the plan to use again. So it's just a cycle. It's just a cycle. There's no plan around anything. They eat when they see food. They sleep when sleep comes. So you want to now start establishing new patterns, new routine. The former pattern was a pattern of chaos and unpredictability. This new pattern is a pattern of routine. A routine around when you sleep and when you wake up and establish good sleeping patterns don't just go to bed maybe by 12 and you wake up for those are stressors stressors will increase your chances of having a relapse so get good solid night rest if it's eight hours you do do that you wake up feeling refreshed then every behavior of and every substance of abuse releases dopamine those feel good hormones you get some dopamine from resting after a good night rest you wake up feeling good motivated excited about the day when you deplete your body of good sleep and nourishing rest you de deplete your body of the natural source of its dopamine so that increases the chance of 
a relapse. So get good night's sleep. Have a routine around when you go to bed and when you sleep. If you want to start 10, you sleep 10, you wake up 6, and you don't spare yourself to just continue again. That way you are resetting that now we are serious about this thing. We have a routine. We don't just tolerate cures and show up the way life brings us to be. Okay? Then the second one is um, have plans for the day. Don't just wake up without having any anything you plan doing that day you just win the day as it comes you plans to fail fails to you fails to plan plans to fail from going to bed the night before you you should already have a copy of a couple of things you have pre-planned pre pre-programmed in your mind that will do this tomorrow and this in the afternoon and this in the night and so have a plan of positivity around it if before you you didn't know what to do with your day was just around usage by the time we are done here you have a couple of things that you can plan into your day so have a plan for the day then journaling journaling is um, just the act of writing to process thoughts to process emotions to process your plans your desire your dreams your visions so the place of journaling is it reduces the mental load we carry in the head and it also reduces the emotional um, turmoil we carry in our mind from sim as simple as I wake up today, these are the plans I have today, write it down. I had this minor altercation with someone and I do not feel very good about it. Let me write it down, feel and be able to identify what emotions I have about it and what it is I can do about it. Then I've said write your plan, write your dreams, write your visions, write your emotions, write everything you can. For someone who is new to journaling and you're wondering where do I start from, a wonderful place could be why do I smoke, why do I do this behavior, what benefits do I get from it, what solution is it helping me. It could be there you now realize that you are even smoking to avoid some pains, you are smoking to avoid some memories. Then you get, dig it deeper, when did this memory start, how did this start, what feelings do I have about it, what it is, is it that I can do about it, just like your own personal self-therapy within the safe space of your own notebook. So generally is something I would recommend. Then of course meditation. Meditation, Christian meditation is you pick a Bible passage, you reflect on it. Mental health meditation is you learning to sit quietly without distraction and observe your thoughts. We all have thoughts, but many times we are not even aware of the thoughts. It's just roaming randomly in our head. So for someone who wants to meditate you'll find guided meditation on youtube by the way but either with the guided meditation if you want to do it yourself you are in a quiet place there's no noise your eyes are closed and you just sit if it's five minutes you observe your thought just let it pass you're not observing and examining you're not observing and correcting you're not dwelling on it it's not that you now sit and start strategizing how you will do one major project that is not a time for that it's a time for you to give your mind rest Anything that shows up, shows up on its own. Not because you're working towards bringing it up. That way you learn to at least reset some neurons in the brain. Meditation has been found to be highly beneficial. I think you should check, read up more of it on YouTube. It's been found to reset um, some neurons in the brain. Helps with memory, helps with, um, with focus, helps to calm you down. And helps to manage negative emotions you can check alpha waves beta waves and theta waves on youtube these are sound waves that helps to really stay focused when you are trying to meditate then of course music for those who are inclined to music incorporate music with positive lyrics into your day positive lyrics please mind the lyrics some lyrics are not uplifting they are lyrics that can even trigger a, a relapse so see what songs you listen to examine the contents and the lyrics and incorporate music into your day it's been found to uplift mood for those who are musically inclined then affirmations and um, what we say to ourselves ultimately become our reality as a man thinketh in his heart so easy so find affirmations um that will uplift your soul have it on your wardrobe have it on your mirror and say it to yourself with faith as often as possible i am good enough i am loved i am worthy 
I am able, and every find everything you can find. You can even in incorporate biblical um, affirmations. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Nations shall come to my light, and kings to the brightness of my rising. After a while of saying this, it becomes so ingrained in the depth of your spirit that nobody can tell you otherwise. Somehow, somehow your spirit resisted that me, I know who I am. I am good enough. There's nothing you can do that can make me feel less than that. So incorporate affirmations into your day. Then, of course, have good eating hygiene. Addiction is not just um, a moral failure. It's not just a lack of self-control. It is a mental health disorder. Some neurons have been thrown out of whack. So the place of eating well, everything you eat nourishes every part of your body. Trying to stay sober, trying to quit an addiction will not be a time to eat every random thing, every snacks, every fast food. You don't even have a plan for food. When you see food is when you see it, when you eat it. Have a plan around your food and select the best and the healthiest. Wholesome meals, whole grains, fruits and vegetables and the likes. Then, of course, incorporate light exercise. Chances are, as someone who is addicted to one substance or the other, you don't do exercise. Because, like I said, addiction streamlines the entirety of such an individual's existence around usage. So light exercise could be jogging twice, twice a week. Could be evening treks twice or thrice a week, as the case may be. Or even more frequently, you could even enroll in a gym. Exercise has also been found to... Um, Se uh, help the body secrete dopamine, the same good feel good hormone that comes from all those substance of behavior of abuse. So that's a natural and a holistic way of getting dopamine. You come away from the exercise feeling refreshed, feeling good, feeling happy about yourself. Then um, spend time with your loved ones. Begin to make non-using friends, sober friends. It could feel awkward at first, but it's something that I would encourage someone trying to quit to look into because chances are all your friends are users and um, trying to quit in the midst of users is a bit challenging so you may have a handful of sober ones so spend more time with them at least that one they will help you to stay more motivated and reduce your chances of a relapse then don't hold on to negative emotions if something upsets you say it in a respectable way if you feel you would not be able to say it write it down Holding on to negative emotions, examining them, taking them back and forth, emotions over time will start to grow and will start having physical manifestation, restlessness, irritability, inability to sleep, which are risk factor for relapses. Then, of course, manage your stressors. If streamline, streamline some activities in your life. Some things is not everything you have to do. Some things are not necessary. Some things are just time wasters. Some hangouts are just time wasters that I've said. So streamline your hangouts, streamline your daily activities, things that do not benefit you or profit you in any significant way. Streamline them, especially if they are stressors. Then, of course, reduce mindless social media scrolling. You know the way people can be on TikTok for two hours and after two hours you ask, what have you even learned today? Nothing. Or people are on Facebook for two hours checking all of their old friends, see where they are in life now, and you're not even communicating with them, you're just checking them out. And you come away from such um, time spent with the feeling of, ah, they have gotten this, they have settled this, they have solved this, and me, I'm still here struggling. Comparison is the thief of joy. Um, anybody who put up anything on social media has to, they will want to make it picture perfect. So you then comparing your own unedited life with your own edited life. It's like setting yourself up for failure. You come away from such uh, social media scrolling, feeling down, feeling inadequate, feeling like you've not achieved anything in life. I tell you, those are short triggers for a relapse. So if you'll be on social media, let it be that you have a reason, you have an aim, you have this thing in mind that you want to go and gain, like watching this our video, of course. So have a reason for being on social media. All right, so then join support group. It's, um, it's unfortunate that we don't have so many support groups in Nigeria. Not many online support groups. I'm not sure I know a lot of uh, online support groups or even physical support groups. But um, you can check online, you'll find Marijuana Anonymous. It's a big, big organization. They have meetings almost every hour. 
and you'll be able to join in. But any support group you want to join, be consistent and contribute. That way you're not just there passively, you are active. Being active helps you stay sober and help you recover faster than just passively scrolling through those support groups. There's also Narcotic Anonymous. You can Google such ones up, you'll find them online. Then read books, the books that will help you on this journey of recovery. There are books around trauma, uh, recovery, addiction, recovery. I will leave some links in the description box below where you can just find those books, download them, read them, incorporate them into your daily activities. If it's a chapter per day, if it's two chapters per day, stick to that routine, be consistent with it. That way you are better off on your way to recovery. Then of course, uh, learn and begin to treat yourself well what do i mean treat yourself to massages you don't need to wait for someone to take you to ma to a massage a parlor if, if that is your kind of thing make your hair a good movie is also wonderful you don't need someone to take you to a movie to watch uh, to watch one visit nature um you can go to parks you can go to zoo those are also things that are uplifting that make people feel good naturally then the final and a very important one I dare to say the most important one every other thing we have said without this one is just like an um, exercise in self-control without the spiritual area being taken care of so build spiritual roots one thing addiction does which I've said times without number is that it ostracizes you kind of snaps your spiritual roots if you ever had one or it prevents you from even building or generating any spiritual roots I'm a Christian, so I am biased towards Christianity. The time of quitting will be a time to find a church and stick to it. It's like you're trying to build a brotherhood of sober people, like-minded people. Or at least you are trying to become like-minded like them. So find a church. While you're trying to have another clique, a church clique is a wonderful one. So find a church and be accountable. Let's don't like I said the same way you will not be passive in an anonymous group. You also cannot be passive in a church. Be accountable. Be known. Be on the service team. Let it be that if something happens and you don't, they don't see you. Someone can call you up because you are known. Not just you are just there. Nobody recognizes when you are there and when you are not even there. Nobody is able to tell. So find a church. Stick to it. Be accountable and be ready to get planted in such a church then of course study your bible daily what you feed grows if you feed your spirit it grows if you feed your mind it grows but what you also feed it would also grow so feeding your mind and your spirit with god's word is one of the surest way of breaking the hold of addictions then a sermon a day that's also another thing i would recommend uh, you know, if you check the bow of this um, channel, is both Christian, faith, Christian faith based and science faith based. Find science based on quitting addictions. So a sermon daily, you know, words are seed, and um, a sermon is like one of the easiest way or the surest way, of course, with affirmation of sowing good seeds into your mind which will ultimately get into your spirit which will ultimately transform into your reality a sermon a day so your mind is the gateway to your spirit let this gateway be we be laced with positive positive things then of course addiction uh, sorry prayer prayer is um like you are trying you know why you're trying to establish that spiritual root you're trying to get closer and connected to god Addiction is a byproduct of poor quality relationships. Not because you don't have relationship. It's just that the quality is so-so. You know that brotherhood of alcoholics, the sisterhood of smokers. If you cut or want to cut ties with um, those who smoke, if you want to or you cut, then of course you should be ready to build a stronger tie with God through prayer. So daily prayer. You can't just wake up and just wing it. We have woken up that the life continues. It, it, it may not be a very, very smooth ride. So commit to prayer. However, we you know how to do it. 
that is all that matters. God is a good, 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 good father. There's no father that a child comes poorly dressed, not smelling good, and says, go away, go away, go away, come back when you have um, tidied up yourself. No good father will do that. Some fathers will do that, but I would not call them good fathers. But a father will, will take you just as you are. Any way you know how to pray is good enough. Do it like that. Then, um... Then addiction, again, is also a means of filling some void. Maybe um, someone feels empty, someone feels sad, someone is trying to cope with guilt, with shame, with some negative thought, trying to forget some things. It's just a way of trying to fill the void <clears throat> that those negative feelings are created. Now, there's a, there's a God-shaped void in every one of us. No drug, no behavior, no human being can fill that void. It is only God himself that can fill that void. So the place of prayer is inviting God into that void. You come away feeling full. You come away feeling content. You've come away having peace. And I tell you, if you consistently stay on this route, as sure as the day is, you are on your way to recovery. Now, if you try this and you stick to it for a couple of months and you find that it's not working, it may be that you need additional help. It doesn't mean that um, your case is hopeless. Please don't believe that. It could just be, be that you need additional help. It could be that you need guidance, guidance to stay sober. It could be that there are still some things deeper, deeper than the addiction that you have not uncovered for which a therapist, a counselor can help you with. So if you try this and you see it doesn't work, please reach out to someone. Find a counselor, find a therapist, and begin um, your journey into recovery. Don't say, I have tried, it did not work, I'm done. No, no, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your dream. Find someone who is certified, who is skilled to help you, and begin your journey to recovery. So I wish you well, I wish you health, I wish you wholeness. Until next time, please stay sober. Bye.